here with reaction. Florida Senator Marco Rubio is with us. Senator, welcome back. These are dangerous times indeed. So we now find ourselves in a situation where we have Hezbollah out of the north using Iranian rockets, killing uh, Israeli kids in a soccer field. Uh, then you've got uh, a two-front war with out of Gaza with Hamas firing their rockets and Israel involved in the war down there. And now, once again, Israel can expect incoming from Iran directly. And they've been told repeatedly by Harris and Biden that they need to show restraint. Well, maybe if they just would have been given the green light to win their war against radical Islamic terrorism, I know I'm not allowed to use the words, but I'm going to use them, uh, maybe that soccer field wouldn't have been hit because there would be fear in the hearts of terrorists that have been firing these rockets for decades at Israel, because I've been there numerous times. Well, a couple of points a lot of people still aren't aware of. I've been talking about it for a number of months. There are over 70,000 Israelis that are displaced, meaning they're living in hotels. Their kids are going to start school in September in conference rooms virtually. They can't go back home because they live in northern Israel, and, they're con and the, the places where they live are constantly being attacked by Hezbollah. So at some point, Israel is going to have to create a buffer zone in Lebanon. You saw the prime minister last week said he would prefer it be done diplomatically, but if not, they'll have to go in and do it. And um, so that's a challenge in that regard. Now, with that attack the other day, this has been going on back and forth. Those missiles, as you said, hit a soccer field. There were kids playing there. We had loss of life. It was terrible. Israel has to respond to that. That is unfortunately and sadly the language of that part of the world in that region. The only language that Iran and Hezbollah understands is the language of strength, and it's the only deterrence that exists. In the case of Hamas and the ceasefire, it is not going to impede talks on ceasefire because Hamas, the only ceasefire they want is a permanent one that allows them to regroup and rearm so they can go back and do again what they did on the 7th of October of last year. And as far as the guy that was killed, their civilian, their leader that came over for the, for the inauguration of the new president in, in Iran, this guy's the head. This is a guy who personally celebrated the, what happened on the 7th of October, which, let me remind everybody, was the rape and kidnapping and murder of innocent civilians, and vowed to do it again. Hamas has said repeatedly, we are going to do what I did on October 7th. We're going to do it again. And so whoever got rid of him did the world a great favor. And by the way, Iran has no right to complain because as we speak, they are actively looking to carry out assassinations of former uh, well, U.S. leaders, including President Trump, here inside the United States. You know, they, uh, Israel is fierce in fighting back, which as they should be. Uh, they took out out of Lebanon the leader that orchestrated the attack and the kids in that soccer field. Uh, my understanding is they took out leader number four, three, two, and now they got leader number one out of the Hamas leadership. I'll remind everybody that Hamas's charter calls for the destruction of the state of Israel. My question to you is. I want your reaction to Kamala Harris saying we need the courage to never use the words radical Islamic terrorism again. And what part of murder, rape, kidnapping, torture and beheading is the left in this country having a hard time understanding? Because I don't understand what they're thinking. Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought you were going to play a clip of her saying it. I've heard her say that before. Let me, let me tell you that when you say radical Islamic terrorism, it's actually to distinguish the radical Islamic terrorists from members of, the, of Islam who are not terrorists and are not radicalized. Um, and, and, and that's what that is. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. They are motivated by a re religious ideology, by the belief that everyone has to believe the way they do and that they have a not just a right, but a religious obligation. That is their interpretation of their faith to force everyone to live under the rules that they've set and that they have a right to kill anyone that doesn't agree with them. Uh, there's no other way to describe it. That's what it is. And, 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 that, and that's an appropriate description, and we'll continue to use it. By the way, that's the official uh, term that's used in the military and in the, in the, the intelligence agencies. So it's a threat that we continue to face in the, in the world, and it America's needs to be confronted.